you got some really positive feedback on the post in the in the Barebo project group. We're gonna quick first thing we're gonna call attention to is this anchor. Uh, I know what you're trying to do and you're creating extra steps to make sure you hit we'll call them checkpoints per se. However, I know John mentioned it, maybe a few others. The best idea here is don't drop back so far. I'll be honest with you though, your alignment there is probably better than it is when you come forward with your shoulder. Um, we talked about that a little bit private message, but your alignment here is probably pretty close to where it needs to be because when you watch, I'm gonna play it, watch how far, right there you bring your head forward, right? Head comes forward, head forward, hold on. Head forward, you, you literally crunch up to come into an anchor. Look at all that extra movement right there. So you come forward into your anchor and lose a lot of back tension, or at least we'll consistently lose back tension. We're gonna let it play through, settle an anchor, try to finish the shot as efficiently as possible. Actually, I think you might even have a little creep there. Come to look at it, slow it down. We're gonna put it in slow motion here. There might be a little bit of creep there. Follow through after a shot. Looks like some pretty decent reflection. You're relaxed um, on your release. Um, bow arms nice and still. So there's some a lot of a lot of positive things going on here. All right, let's play through. Get the next one. The other thing that I want to pay some attention to, and I I started these videos with you in this position because look at all of this extra movement you got going on. Um, there was some discussion also about the way you set your grip and, you know, I am an advocate of parts of the NTS, specifically set the hook, set the grip. Once they're done, they're done. Don't mess with them after that. Um, I've saw some comments about, you know, set your grip first, then set your hook. I disagree with that. Do whatever seems fit, but here's the reason that I, I tell you to follow the NTS system on those steps. And that's because once you set your hook, your hook doesn't have to move to, to lift the bow. A lot of times people will set their grip, go back to set their hook, and then have to reset their grip again because when you go to set your hook, um, you tend to hold on to the bow. My recommendation is do it fits you, but I would take less steps, whatever that may be. Um, the less we have to do, the more repeatable the shot. But yeah, and the other thing is, you can do all those things by standing up straight here. There's no need to lean forward. All you're doing is fatiguing your muscles and doing extra movements and doing extra things, frankly, that if you don't do it quite exactly the same, it might mess up your shot process for some reason. And hey, we do funky things when we're under pressure and anxiety or stress. So when you get on a tournament line, you know, you're just leaving a lot of variables for yourself as a competitor to mess up. Stand up straight, dude. Posture, stand up straight, head midline between your shoulders, all that stuff. Um, let's just go through the shot. Let's run it. Really high raise. I'm gonna pay, call attention to that too. You see this? That does you absolutely no good whatsoever extra movement again something extra that's being done that has no bearing on the physical shot other than it fatigues you it's more movement and frankly when you lift this way from this position to here you're recruiting a whole bunch of muscles that in arrows 50 50 51 52 53 down to 60 on an indoor round per se um you know that muscle fatigue could eventually affect you. So, you know, let's get away from all that. Make it simple, man. Make it simple. Run shot. Way overdraw. Try to come back in. Move the head. I wanted to uh, throw together a video quick 
of the release that is promoted with that proper alignment um, in our messages back and forth we talked about you know the alignment of your a full draw approach and that your elbow was outside the arrow your elbow's outside the arrow because you're not opening your shoulders i sent you a screenshot of john who's like the epitome of a non dare i say nts shooter but he hits those positions that are in the nts program um, um shoulder alignment and that elbow in line with the arrow elbow in line with the arrow so that when his release breaks his release breaks and comes straight back <clears throat> i'm gonna take a couple of videos so that you can just to touch upon the process of setting up the shot the nts calls for you to make the hook and then set your grip first in my opinion that's the most efficient way to do it there are some others out there that make their grip first and then their hook second i think that's kind of small potatoes if you can repeat it for me because i am um very meticulous about the order which i do things i think that you should take set the hook first because the last thing i want to do things in an order with which they can't change so if i if I set my grip and then have to go and set my hook from my grip and then readjust my grip afterwards, something like that, I don't like to take all that extra time or I don't like to throw those variables in there. So I'm gonna set my hook, set my grip, and then get into my race to draw. So I'm gonna use my 20 yard crawl because I'm just shooting some blank bail here real close and I just wanna go through the process with you. So I'm, you'll, you'll see me, I actually pre-draw a little bit when I'm standing up straight. The other thing is that you do this to set your crawl and then you kind of come in and, and go into your draw there. In my opinion, if you came into my training center, I would, I would knock that out of your shot process and say, if you want to set, set your crawl, you know, bring the bow closer to you, set your crawl where you need to, then reposture. Set good posture right off the bat. Get your posture set. From that point, your grip should already be set because you already set your hook. Then when you get into your pre-draw, it's really just relaxing your shoulders. That arm is straight. And I open my shoulders and put tension on the string right away. That starts the pre-draw and begins opening the shoulders. So when I raise the draw, my hands don't go forward. As my hands come back, I'm actually already into my draw cycle and my, my arms are open, or my shoulders are open. And I wanna bring that hand, you'll hear it referred to as paint the face or that finger drag back along my cheek. I guess the idea there is if you watch shooters who don't have proper alignment, or they don't have a vertical hand. If your hand is out like this. Um, the first motion of the hand in slow motion is gonna dictate where your release goes. The most efficient release is straight back off the string. There's no questions, no one can argue that. That's the most efficient. Doesn't mean that for some people they can't repeat this. I'm not saying they can't repeat it. Um, if you do something enough times the right way, you're going to become good at it. However, the idea of the things that I like to share from the NTS system are the biomechanical things, the things that are gonna put you in the right positions as easy as possible and promote repeatability even when the shots don't go well. follow through after the shot is really crucial to the results that you get down at the target. If you're 
your bow arm is still and under control um, after the shot, then you know that your aim prior or your relaxing into the shot prior is where it needs to be pro before you let go. I hope these things help you. I can tell you that Barebow does not have a, a cookie cutter formula for success. I think we see that across the world and even specifically in the Barebow Project group. And, um, you know, we have, we have shooters all over that do things similarly and we have shooters that do things their own way. I think that for somebody who's already got a little bit of information in regards to the NTS and you're trying to implement that, it can be implemented. Um, you're shooting really good practice scores, but the, the hinges in your form will come out on the competition tournament line and under pressure. I think that's where the importance is of refining your skills, making sure your alignment is good, that your release is reliable, and that your ability to relax under pressure is crucial. And that's when you'll see tournament scores climb along with experience and maybe even level out closer to what your practice scores are. It's just, it's something that I think with aiming experience, tournament experience, shooting experience alone, there's a volume of arrows or you reach a maturity as a shooter. It's definitely something that you, as a, as a competitor, has to put diligent work in, learn a little bit about your form, your tendencies, and kind of like what John said in the first um, podcast, make mistakes and you fix them. And then take the information from someone like John or myself or Grayson um, that put the skills to work and have seen the results, um, whether it's when coaching others or as a competitor ourselves. Um, I hope this helps you. I hope this leads you in the right path. And um, thanks for reaching out to the Bearboat Project. I hope we can help you. That